Hey everybody, Mark Spector Comics and I'm back. This time with my Moon Knight Episode 2 Breakdown, Easter Eggs, etc. If you're interested in that, stay tuned for that intro. Alright guys, so welcome back. If you haven't already, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that bell notification so that when I do put out some content, you get it in a timely fashion. Episode 2 uh, is called Summon the Suit, and it takes you know place immediately after the ending of Episode 1. So uh, let's get right into it. Uh, this episode's breakdown is going to be a little bit shorter than the previous one, just because I feel like there wasn't as much that happened compared to Episode 1 in the context of just like, the introduction of the character and so forth um time wise it was just like the episode one breakdowns um rumored leak of time length it was right at that 51 minute mark which so it looks like the next two episodes will be right at the same minute mark as well we start off with the uh he's having a bad dream he wakes up and then <laughs> he jumps right out of the bed and you can see he's still uh, tethered to the uh, bed there so uh after that, he goes to work and uh, he sees his buddy there, the security guard, and with some, you know, caution tape around a few parts of the exhibit. And he was like, oh, um, I think I have some information on the uh, what happened last night. And uh, he's like, oh, let's go to the footage. And he sees it's just him sitting there walking around the museum, running around and, you know, basically vandalizing the property and <laughs> you don't see any of the jackals any of the people that he fights and then you clearly see mark specter walking away and that that wasn't obviously stephen grant and uh he ends up basically getting sacked you know getting fired from the uh, museum all right so now he goes to the storage locker you know the the key that he got from episode one he goes across town and ends up finding this place that actually has his locker and he's like oh yeah you know locker 43 so uh, the guy walks into his locker and then you get your first easter egg of the show which is the qr code and if you scan the qr code in episode one you go werewolf by night 32 so it's pretty cool you can read the comic uh, for free and then for this week's episode you got Werewolf by Night issue number 33, which is his second appearance. So you can read his first and second appearance in comics. I'm wondering if they continue it on, and then this week's episode you get issue 37, which would his, be his third um, appearance in comics, or if they go to Marvel Spotlight or Moon Knight 1. Who knows? So that was pretty cool Easter egg. So he goes inside his locker, and he sees how, you know, he, he's pretty shocked of what's in there. He goes and finds a duffel bag, and it's, he pulls out a pistol. And he pulls out some some wand, which is pretty interesting that they find some Chinese currency in there. I'm wondering if, if this will end up tying into um, Shang-Chi a little bit, if he did a mission out in China. And uh, then he sees his buddy Mark. He, he appears through the uh, mirror. So we, we find out that they can only communicate through each other through like mirrors or glass or stuff like that. So uh, he starts talking to him and then he tells him, I serve Kanshu. And he starts laughing. I was like, the Egyptian god of the moon? <laughs> and I only serve his vengeance. I was like, <laughs> so he starts laughing. He's like, oh, man, I'm really going crazy. So then he was like, well, what if I just take all this stuff and I just take it to the authorities and just turn myself in? Then you can never, you know, take over the body. So then he walks out and he starts running. And then you get this really cool scene, pretty creepy where the, um, the storage area just starts flickering lights back and forth, and you see Kanshu appearing, and then you get this really in-depth picture of Kanshu right at the end that is just crazy looking, and then he's like really scared. So that, that was a pretty neat scene. So then he runs out of the storage unit, falls on the street, and uh, we finally meet Layla, which um, she's apparently been looking for Mark for quite some time, and I think two months and um and which kind of makes sense because if he had died and he's gone missing and he's now serving Kanshu, it kind of plays together with that time gap you know he's been Steven this whole time on and off and um so this Layla character is obviously not a character in the comics you know the 
girlfriend wife in the comics is Marlene and um, she appears in the Marvel Spotlight 28 issue that's her first appearance but um, this Layla could be a little bit of a twist and um, I have a few theories on that I'll probably have to make another video on that later on but um, she takes him to the you know she goes to the flat and then she starts talking about the situation and he's still playing the act as if he's Steven, which he is Steven, but she doesn't believe him. And then he starts telling her, her you know, what's been going on lately and uh, got this duffel bag with stuff. And then you hear Mark in the background. It's like, you don't want to tell her that, you know, you're going to get her in trouble. You know, her life's going to be at danger if you show her the scarab. And then she finds out the scarab's there anyways. And then she's like, well, we've been fighting side by side this whole time about that. And, um, you know, she takes the scarab and then runs outside the, the window once she hears the door you know they knock on the door and there's being two people there and they're out looking for steven so they take steven out into the ride with the uh the little car ride and then they say that you know this mark specter guy is really bad and we get a good origin story on mark specter how he's the mercenary he ended up killing four uh, archaeologists which in the comics in moon knight one um Raul Bushman is the one that actually kills the uh, archaeologists. But um, they're right in there, and then the two people there was like, I thought you are taking me to the station. And then they show their arms. So obviously they're working for Harrow. And then they uh, Stephen actually meets up with Harrow again. So then Harrow starts talking, and what we see in the background is basically his compound. So like what we see in the opening scene of episode one. And you see a bunch of people there. They're all hanging out, eating, enjoying. Basically all of his cult members and um he starts talking to steven i was like do you hear him do you hear the voices do you hear the voices of mark Kanshu? it was like i once before heard these voices as well and he starts saying because he was once his his avatar as well and um and he somehow managed to not become his avatar and now he serves amit and I'm kind of wondering what he did to um, get out of that. But, um, you know, he's you see him spooked because uh, the wind's blowing. But then he talks about he, he can't hurt us here. Basically saying that Kanju is not physically there. And that's interesting because um, it, a lot of these gods are not like you can't physically. They're not physically present. You have to somehow bring them on to earth. And so they're basically in this void. But, um, you know, Mark and Stephen can both see them, but they can't, like, physically, like, feel their presence. So that's pretty interesting. And, you know, that's part of Harrow's. He talks about how Alma is banished, you know, from what happened centuries ago. And he needs that scarab that Stephen possesses in order to get to that tomb. So then... They get close and they just like, don't make me use this. Yeah, he pulls out the staff. <laughs> it's like, I really don't want to use this. Well, he's like, well, you don't have to. <laughs> so then he starts picking it up. And you can see the eyes. They start glowing purple, which is uh, very interesting because it's, you know, in, in, the, uh, in the MCU, there's a lot of different, you know, magic sources and they're all different color coded and harrow uses basically he adopts a purple hue and in the mcu we also see wanda using a purple hue as well which is for the dark chaos magic and i'm wondering if he has some sort of chaos magic as well and um we also see obviously in the cosmos, the power stone, which is also purple. So there's a few different things going on here. Doctor Strange uses um, in the comics a lot of chaos magic as well. So then now we get a part where Harrow starts to summon the power and we get this really cool like reality warping magic. And then you see the jackal that comes up similar to when he summons the jackal in the first episode. And then Layla appears and they're like running away and you start to see she says summon the suit summon the suit it's like what are you talking about summon the suit and the jackal appears and he throws him off through the window he falls down and then you see him 
in the suit. And it's not the suit that we think, but it's the Mr. Knight suit, which is hilarious. And then he starts to talk to Mark. He's like, what is this? He's supposed to be wearing the ceremonial Egyptian suit. And I say, oh, it looks pretty sharp. <laughs> and then he starts getting cocky and um, he fights the jackal. And you got this like Muhammad Ali, you know, shake and bake back and forth. And then he swings at him. And he knocks the jackal, which was pretty sweet. So then Stephen gets a little, a little cocky. And then the jackal comes up and starts beating him up. And then he decides, well, it's time to give up the body back to Mark. And then we finally see him dress up in the ceremonial Moon Knight attire. And then he chases him out through the city. Pretty cool chase scene. And he's fighting through the buildings, you know, running across. And then he gets to that part where he gets off the roof, throws him onto this top of a, you know, statue. And it pierces the jackal. And then you see the jackal disappear, which was pretty cool. And, um... Then he gets the, uh, the the little dart back in a really nice scene. And then he goes back as Mark. So then now, you know, we're back full center as Mark. And then you see in the in the mirror, you see Steven talking. He's like, I want my body back. I want my body back. It's like, well, it's not going to happen right now. I still have to finish my mission as the servitude to, to Khonshu. And... Um, he got this one last mission to finish and then we can basically go our ways and you don't have to see me ever again. And, and he starts talking about, you know, I saw what you did. It was not very disturbing, you know, and he brings up Layla and I was like, Ooh, I had to keep her, you know, I had to basically keep my space from her because I want to keep her safe. And um, he knows that once he finishes his, last mission he wants to be done because he's paid his debt to Khonshu and that Khonshu had basically you know used or wants to use Layla as his next avatar which is very interesting because in the comics there is a female Moon Knight and um, I believe the first time we see this is going to be one of your potential spec books here first time we see a female Moon Knight is in a Mark Spector Comics issue number 42 and that's like um Infinity War tie-in and there's like a one-off issue where Moonshade which is the bad guy ends up finding multitude of different versions of Moon Knight and there is a female Moon Knight which ends up you know the, the villain ends up killing her in that one issue but um, that would be the earliest appearance of Moon Knight the other one would be um I think it's Manifest Destiny 2099, which is um, book's been catching a little bit of steam as well. A much newer book. But those are your two spec books to look out for if, in fact, they actually go that route and make uh, Layla the future Moon Knight, which I hope they don't because <laughs> you, know, you want to keep it to Mark Spector, of course. So then he starts having a discussion with Kanchu, and it was like, well, we had an agreement that you'd keep Steven out of the way. And, you know, there's going to be consequences if you don't. And, um, you know, I know you don't like this, but Layla's going to be the next avatar if you don't complete the mission. <laughs> so then he's like, well, what are we off to doing now? So I was like, what the hell do you think? And then you end up seeing the end scene where uh, it's playing some... Um, music and then you see the backdrop of which appears to be cairo with the uh, pyramids so i'm excited for uh, episode three that's it for this episode hopefully you guys enjoyed that hopefully you guys enjoyed the breakdown hopefully you guys enjoyed the easter eggs and any potential spec that you may or may not get out of this so uh until next time mark spec the comics out